My name is Ishal Abdul Halain. Welcome to my video on subroutines instructions. Let's begin. A subroutine is defined as a sequence of instructions that is written to complete a specific task. Examples of the tasks that a subroutine services are routine calculations, such as finding average values of an array of numbers, or sorting numbers. Another example is a subroutine that initializes the I.O. ports of the microprocessor. Subroutines are also commonly used to display text on the screen. Thus, a subroutine is basically a set of instructions in a program that can be used to perform any routine process required in your program. You are looking at a subroutine that calculates the average value of a string of numbers. There are five elements that defines the structure of subroutine, including this one. The five elements are the starting address, subroutine name, subroutine instructions, return instruction, and the subroutine end statement. Let's identify these elements with our example subroutine. The starting address is here, at address 3000. It signifies the start of the subroutine. The subroutine name is ABG, and holds the subroutine's first instruction, move.ld0, d1. These are the subroutine instructions, they define what the subroutine does. RTS is the return instruction. It is always placed at the end of the subroutine instructions. Finally, this is the subroutine end statement. It signifies the end of the subroutine. You should also note that the subroutine starting address is linked to the subroutine's name, which in turn is associated with the first instruction of the subroutine. This allows the subroutine to execute whenever it is called upon. Now let's move on. There are two parts to a subroutine's execution which are the subroutine call, and return. The subroutine is called using a call instruction. Once it finishes execution, the subroutine will return back to the instruction after its call instruction. Pretty neat. Let's have a closer look at the subroutine call and return processes. A subroutine is called using the instruction BSR, which stands for branch to subroutine, or some programmers prefer to use the JSR instruction instead, which is short for jump to subroutine. Here is the syntax. The label in this case is the name of the subroutine. When either of these instructions are executed, the microprocessor will push the address of the instruction following this instruction into the stack and decrement the stack pointer by 4. This ensures a return point after the subroutine has finished its job. Once the return address is saved in the stack, the program counter is loaded with the address associated with the subroutine's name. The program then officially jumps to the subroutine and executes its instructions. Now for the return. Recall that the last instruction in any subroutine is RTS. Once the micro P executes this instruction, the value in the stack, which is the return address, is popped into the program counter and the stack pointer is incremented by 4. This allows the program to resume where it left off. This is the concept of subroutine execution and return simplified for you. This program is going to show you how a subroutine is used to calculate the average value of numbers contained in an array. It will highlight the details on what happens when a subroutine is called and also what happens when a subroutine finishes its task. It is inspired from the original program written by Mr. Ricardo Gutierrez Osuna. The DC.L directive, known as the Define Constant directive is used to define the array size and the array elements in our example program. Line number 3 will create a long word value in memory at address 1000 and associated to label size, as shown on your left. The next instruction creates three data points, each a long word starting at the next address after size and associated to label array 1. Note that a comma separated value is used to define the elements in array 1. Each element is written in decimal, but converted to hexadecimal in memory. Similarly, the next instruction creates the values for array 2 in memory, starting at the address where array 1 left off. The program is going to calculate the average values of the elements in array 1 and 2 using a subroutine. To calculate the average value of the elements in array 1, it will add up the elements of array 1 and divide the result with the size of array 1, the average value of the elements in array 2 is calculated in a similar manner. Let's examine the program as a whole. The main program is stored in memory from address 1000 to 1030. On the other hand, 
the subroutine is stored at address 3000 to 3000 E. The subroutine's name is AVG, which is short for average. Before the program executes, the stack pointer points to address 100000 by default. The program starts execution at line 6. When line 6 is executed, data register D0 is loaded with 000000003. Note that D0 contains the size of our two arrays. Execution of the next instruction causes the effective address of array 1, which is its starting address, 1004 to be loaded into register A0. Note that a long word data type is used by the LEA instruction, good. Now, for the interesting part. Line 8 is our subroutine call instruction, BSRAVG. Once executed, the next instruction's address, 1028, is pushed onto the stack, following the stack pointer decremented by 4. We now have the subroutine's return address safely stored in the stack. The micro P then loads the address of AVG, which is 3000 into the program counter. This causes the program to branch to our subroutine. For simplicity, let's forget about the program counter for a while, cool. Execution of line 13 causes D1 to hold the contents of D0, which I remind you again is the size of our two arrays. D1 on the other hand, will be a down counter for our loop that is used to add the elements of our arrays. Line 14 clears the contents of register D2. We are going to use D2 to add up the array elements and also to hold the result of the average calculation. Line 15 is executed next, it causes the contents of memory pointed by A0 to be added to D2. D2 is now 0000, 000 a and A0 is incremented by 4 to become 1008 due to the post-increment addressing mode used on A0. The next instruction at line 16 is executed and it causes our down counter, register D1 to be decremented by 1. Its new value is 2. The branch not equal instruction is executed next. It causes a branch back to label REPT to be executed, because D1 is not equal to 0 when it was decremented in the previous fetch execute cycle. Line 15 is executed again, it causes the contents of memory pointed by A0 to be added to D2. D2 is now 0000, 0019, and A0 is incremented by 4 to become 100C due to the post increment addressing mode used on A0. The next instruction at line 16 is executed and it causes our down counter, register D1 to be decremented by 1. Its new value is 1. The branch not equal instruction is executed next. It causes a branch back to label REPT to be executed, because D1 is not equal to 0 when it was decremented in the previous fetch execute cycle. Line 15 is executed again. It causes the contents of memory pointed by A0 to be added to D2. D2 is now 0000, 0001B, and A0 is incremented by 4 to become 1010 due to the post-increment addressing mode used on A0. The next instruction at line 16 is executed again and it causes our down counter, register D1 to be decremented by 1. Its new value is 0. This causes the Z flag to be set to 1. The branch not equal instruction reads the new Z flag value and does not initiate a branch. Instead, Line 18 is executed. The divide instruction divides the value in D2, which is the sum of the element values in array 1 by register D0, which holds the array's size. The result 9, which is the average value of the elements in array 1 is stored in register D2. Take note that the program counter is now pointing to 300C and is ready to execute the RTS instruction. When executed, the stack's value is popped into the program counter. This causes our program to return back from the subroutine to the main program, exactly at the instruction where it left off. The stack pointer is incremented by 4, back to its original value, 100000000. Let's forget about the program counter again for now. When line 9 is executed, the effective address of array 2, which is 1010 is loaded into register A0. Then, the BSR instruction in line 10 is executed. It causes the next instruction's address, 1030, to be pushed into the stack, and the program counter to be loaded with subroutine AVG's address, the program now executes the subroutine again, but processing array 2 in order to calculate its element's average value. Once this is done, the program counter reaches line 19 and executes the RTS instruction. 
This causes the return address in the stack to be popped into the program counter and the stack pointer incremented by 4 back to its original value, 100000000. The RTS instruction in line 11 marks the end of the program. All of the register's final condition is shown here. D0 contains 3, A0 contains 101C, D1 contains 0, and the average value of the elements in array 2 is stored in D2 as A. Hopefully by now you would have clearly understood what a subroutine is, how it is invoked, and how it returns control to the main program, remember that the stack plays an important role when dealing with subroutines. Thank you for your time, have a nice day.